Now, the list of suspects includes Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the alleged planner of the 9-11 attacks. The charges against him include conspiring with al-Qaeda to murder civilians. About 3,000 people were killed in the September 11th attacks. Prosecutors say they will also seek the death penalty if the suspects are convicted. Joining us with more on this is Stephen Clemens. He is the director of the American Strategy Program at the New America Foundation. So, uh, Mr. Clemens, after six years of holding these 9-11 terror suspects at Guantanamo, the U.S. government has now laid formal charges against six of them saying uh, that they're going to lay out a long-term, sophisticated uh, plan that they can prove was uh, led by al-Qaeda to attack the U.S. So what happens now? Well, at least the ball is moving. You know, this has been six years of purgatory for not only the prisoners, but, but also for those concerned about how healthy the American justice system is and whether these military tribunals uh, will in fact work. So the ball's moving forward, but I think the military has a very, and, and, and those uh, lodging uh, the complaints and accusations against these terrorists are, have a very high bar to get over in terms of distilling and setting aside the doubts that many have about the fairness of this process. Okay, let's talk about some of that, um, because the U.S. government is seeking the death penalty, right, for possible convictions, and this is in a U.S. formed court. Uh, right. There has been already some international uh, outcry surrounding uh, the fact that, you know, some, at least one confession was obtained by waterboarding. So are we going to see more outcries over this? Well, I think so. I think that one of the, the issues that, that some in the world are more wrapped up in than I think the American population will be is the subject of the death sentences. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say there's a bit of a gap between the United States and the rest of the world, but it's just a fact. What I think Americans are, are more alarmed about, frankly, is the waterboarding and torture. We know that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, one of the leaders and the mastermind of the 9-11 uh, plot, or the alleged mastermind, is, uh, uh, had also admitted to killing journalist Daniel Pearl, uh, mm -hmm. And even Daniel Pearl's wife and other family members uh, significantly doubt his uh, his confession uh, uh, allegedly gained under torture as well. So there's a lot of doubt in what Khalid Sheikh Mohammed may have offered under under duress. And I think it's going to be an interesting legal process to see this. You know, one of the things that Americans and I think any political system in the world, you really don't know the norms of it until you see it shocked, as I think America was. And, and many feel that America's uh, justice system was just fine as it was, that the Geneva Conventions was, were just fine as they were. And, and we've moved down a slippery slope into a real, in, into a zone where it's, it's not clear uh, what is ethical, what is not ethical, what can be used in court, what can't. This is real, real new, uh, new space we're moving into. In terms of the others that are charged, uh, you mentioned uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. What about the others? Were there any surprises when you saw the list of names there? Well, I looked at the list. Um, there, there were no major surprises. These, all of these individuals had been on the top of the list. If you were to look at the, at, you know, now the public documents on all of the prisoners and detainees being held, there weren't surprises that these were considered the top of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. What I think are the surprises is we haven't seen the content of all the charges, nor do we know to what degree those charged with these crimes will be able to rebut them, to call witnesses in their defense, and to challenge the intelligence in any kind of open and transparent way that has been used to, to indict them. And just quickly, the timeline on this, when will we actually learn more? Um, I don't think that that has been made clear yet. Uh, we've just essentially gotten the tip of the iceberg where the government has said it is now formally charging and moving the process forward, but they've not come forward with any kind of credible timeline that I've seen thus far. All right, a lot of people watching to see what happens from here. Terrorism expert Stephen Clemens, appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, there is a disturbing new report about children suffering from mental illness in New Brunswick. The study says the provincial government has been treating them like criminals. If we don't intervene early enough with the right treatment, uh, these kids end up invariably before the courts. The investigation uncovered sexual abuse and harsh treatment of children sent to jails because there is no other place for them. In one case, a 14-year-old girl suffering from schizophrenia was shackled and strip-searched by guards in riot gear. In another, a 15-year-old boy with a long history of mental disorder was sent to a local jail and put in a holding cell where he was repeatedly sexually abused by a guard. Well, are you having problems with your BlackBerry? You're not alone. A major outage of the device is affecting users across North America. Several users have reported.
the ferry devices are not connecting to the network, but others say they can still access emails. BlackBerry Maker Research in Motion notified its clients.